Here's the scenario. You guys will like this one. I will apply it to myself. It's rhetorical. I will answer the question at the end of the video, perhaps hinting throughout why I am going to answer it the way I will. Here we go. I am a military sniper. Let's say a marine sniper with my spotter. We have been holed up for, let's say a day, 24 hours, completely camouflaged out, ghillie suits if you want. We do have air support on call. We have a high value asset that needs a bullet in a certain place if you get my drift. We have been waiting for the right shot, quietly. We're all alone out there. Kind of like you see in the movies, that type of situation. Like, I don't know, pick your movie, Shooter, the opening part of Shooter. Which of the guns on the table do I choose to make that shot? Now, by way of introduction, and it is the star of the show, is the Tika T3CTR, or as I like to say, harkening back to the safety dance song in the 80s, C, 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 T, 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 R, 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 R. The compact tactical rifle. It's cool. It is mostly excellent. There are a couple things that bother me about the gun. We'll talk about it. That's the whole purpose of the GRV. I like it. But for three years, I could not get a hold of one to review. Thanks to the gun store at the top, I got a hold of this one. Supporting TMP, supporting the GRVs, thank you very much. And this very gun will be for sale at that gun store with a certificate of authenticity. At the top is my own build. Do you recognize that gun? I think I've shown it in other videos. I might do a mini tabletop later. Do you recognize it, TMPers? If you said that is the Weatherby Vanguard sub MOA in 308 caliber, by the way, that's 308 as well, circa 2009, congratulations, you are correct, but it doesn't look anything like it did back then. It now wears a desert camouflage Hogue stock, rubberized, excellent stock. Legacy Sports removable magazine system. This one, I think, has a Timney trigger in it, and it's wearing a Bartline barrel and medium profile in it. Threaded, by the way, for a can. Red dot sight on top for close range shots. I forget the rings. They're nothing special. And it's got a Burris 6-24. Which one would I use to make the shot? And this one is a Nikon Buckmaster's, only a 1-inch tube. Hmm. I'm not... Well, I'll kind of consider the glass, but we're really going to look at the guns because I think it will help focus the discussion and the tabletop review. A couple other introductions. Here we go. That is a Gemtech Halo can. This is a War Eagle blade, an 8CR13 MOV. Awesome. That's an AG Russell special knife. TMP patches go to the web store at the top. We've got new merchandise coming out sometime, so it's probably a good idea to check in with that web store once in a while because sometimes we put out specials unannounced and they sell super quick. Well, we have several watches for the review. You're going to laugh. Seiko Dive Watch. This is a SNE 107P2 for 141 solar powered. Would I be wearing that in the sniper situation? I'd wear that over these two. <laughs> what have you got two watches on for? I don't know. I just do for the review. It's just I'm just goofing around. This is a Navaforce. Dude, that's an awesome watch. And it costs like 15 bucks Japanese movement. And I have a Barton 24 millimeter silicone band on it. And get whatever color you want. 15 bucks. It works and it's 30, mil, 30 meter water resistant. Back to the gun. Which one would I choose? Uh, first up, let's back up. Tika T3 ta uh, CTR, compact tactical rifle. They have a new version of the Tikas that have come out, I think, within the last year. They're called a T3X, and there are going to be some upgrades. I'm really not sold on every time a, a, a manufacturer comes out and goes, hey, we got new upgrades. It's more perfect than before. Uh, to that, I say maybe. They usually will do it to warm up the product line and to create more interest, and more importantly, to create and generate more publicity through everything. Uh, here online in BoobTube, maybe written blogs online and magazines. And so there's more press releases coming out, and so they want to make money. 
the T3X does have some upgrades. I'm, again, I haven't evaluated it, but I will cover them super quick and roll in some footage. They have interchangeable pistol grips, uh, although they only comes with one. I think you have to go out and buy the other ones, which not great. That's not great value. And since it's made in Finland by Seiko, uh, it might really be hard to get a hold of because it's not a U.S. produced gun, of course. Some of the T3Xs, you can change the width of the forend. So you might put on a beaver tail forend up there. That's cool. It looks like it has a better recoil pad on it. They talk about some foam insert in the stock, like there was a noise problem to begin with. I honestly don't know why that would ever be necessary, but okay. And then they've enlarged the ejection port for single round feeding into T3X. Enough said. There are some different variations of both the, the standard Tika T3 and the T3X. I'll scroll them across the screen as we're talking. And some are super cool and some are completely oriented towards a hunting crowd. So they're going to be lightweight, thin profile barrels, uh, different stock configurations, just like every bolt action manufacturer does. Let me say this. I actually love the Tika T3 action. I based my nailer, the Nut and Fancy Long Range Rifle, on the Tika T3, and man, it was and is that a great long range platform. I chambered mine in 6.5 Creed. 1,000 meters all day long, 1,200 if you want. Of course, you got to do your part to reach out that far. Uh, that gun came and went very quickly, and I'll say this congratulations to those who were by it. Because it has gone up in value like a lot. The price that came out for was insanely low. So low, in fact, they couldn't do it for that price and they had to shut it down. But I've learned in the process too that I'm just, it's hard to, you know, to get a gun store to do the right thing. Uh, sometimes they just cannot handle the orders, and that was the situation. Long story short, whoever bought the nailers, hang on to them. They are special. And man, do they shoot good. Uh, we rock Bartline barrels on those during the nailer builds. I think most of y'all ordered them in 6.5 Creed. There were a couple 308s, I guess. There weren't many uh, actually made in the grand scheme of things. I forget the actual numbers, but man, what a deal that was. And that's a Tika T3 action. This becomes important in this review because of an issue I did note with a Tika C C C C T T T R R R. We'll get to it out of box and I like the sticker they're guaranteeing one MOA accuracy on this beast that's not unusual by the way because I, I just reviewed the Thompson contender compass and it has a one MOA guarantee as well and it's a like a three hundred and fifty dollar gun that's a good deal though I mean three fifty this one I'll jump ahead to value is not inexpensive but it's made in Finland it's a European gun imported 870 is what they're selling it for Worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. I mean, for a precision bolt action rifle, that's nothing. A custom like the Nailer 4, easy. Easy for five, six thousand, easy. The question we look at, and going back to that scenario, is does this gun shoot as good as a custom? This one. And by the way, that Vanguard right now is a custom rifle. I mean, for every all the upgrades I've done to it, totally custom. We'll bounce back to that. Philosophy of use long range combat weapon yeah a lot of guys like that in their inventory they like the option and i would think that most of the people watching this video are watching it because of that without rule of law do i see long range shots happening mm, to be honest not really so i would probably discount the wrol pou right out the gate i wouldn't say never but there's so many things that i talk about in sniper fantasy you, you, you know you just need to be aware of you know, shoot smart, avoid, 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 avoid conflict, de-escalate, de-escalate, preserve life, preserve life. Enough said. Rant complete, by the way. Uh, recreational, absolutely. It's fun to get out to shoot these guns. The magazine capacity on the CCCTTTRR, <laughs> the CTR, is 10 rounds. They're sitting right here. That's actually 11. So it's 10 plus 1. That's a lot of rounds for a bolt action rifle. Kudos to Tika for building this rifle. It's been out for a number, number of years, though. The, Tika CTR. It's not new. So that's an excellent rounds capacity. My gun too, if we get back to the scenario, has the same one. 
It has a Legacy Sports magazine, which has been extremely reliable in my use, extremely lightweight, lighter than this one. And I have 10 rounders for that as well. So, kind of sixes in firepower. Hunting, uh, yeah, you could. This one is light enough. Naked at 7 pounds, 11 ounces. It has a 20 inch heavy, semi heavy profile barrel. It's totally free floated, 1 to 11 twist, 308 chambering in this one. There's all types of calibers you can get the Tika T3 CTR in. Or any Tika for that matter. I mean, really this review can function for any of the Tika bolt action rifles. They're just, the, the action's pretty much the same. The barrels will change uh, and the stocks will change. Other than that, it's the same rifle underneath, deep down. I think a lot of people consider the Tika brand to be kind of the value-oriented Seiko or if you want to say Sako, I always say Seiko brand. I think Tikas, from what I know about them, are just amazing. They are su super accurate, uh, and they're so well put together. The material's excellent. For instance, the barrel is CHF. It's cold hammer forged barrel. I mean, so we're talking ultra quality for a price level that I think is in the ballpark. Philosophy of use hunting, yeah. Uh, and just plain having fun target shooting. We'll leave it at that. And then military sniper. In our scenario. You know, have militaries adopted this? Uh, no, I doubt it. But there's probably some law enforcement departments with their marksmanship team that are running some, either some Seikos, maybe some uh, Tika T3 CTRs, for sure. SAWC design and ergos. We talked about the barrel already. It is threaded. 5.8 to 24 threading. Well done. It's pretty commonplace nowadays to see at least a tactical oriented gun to be threaded and moreover like the thompson contender compass that's really not a tactical oriented gun it's a hunting gun that they threaded why would they do that simple sales the the market including me and i've ranted about this in my reviews for years i said you should have a threaded barrel so someone's listening why because it gives a guy a, an option and maybe they want to put a can on it maybe they don't it doesn't cost cost the, the end user anything so if you don't want to put a can on your ctr just run it like this with a threaded cap on it you know no big deal it doesn't cost you anything uh now the manufacturer doesn't think that because it costs them in machine time and materials so they they generally like to release non-tb versions rant complete on that one so i love the profile of the barrel the quality the finish is excellent it is completely free floated in what i consider to be an excellent stock this stock is really cool. The, the reason I say that is because it is traditional, and I like traditional stocks. I've always said that. Even in my nailer review, I said that. Now, that has an x-ray chassis in it, uh, which I super like. But a standard stock is going to be lighter, and it just is comfortable. And now if you go with the T3X Tikas, they'll be more adaptable, at least on paper. There's no rubber inserts on this one, so it's not grabby. There's a little bit of an attempt for checkering. Standard pistol grip. You have a left and right oriented. You don't need to change it. Cheek pad on this. And I consider the butt pad to be adequate on the Tika T3 CTR. Totally adequate. So good stock. And here's a nice test if we see if the free float is going to last when we put it on B, uh, bipod. You're going to have some flex here. With the budget rifles like the TC, Savage Axis, American, uh, Ruger American is what I want to say. You'll have a lot more flex in this. And that's adequate. We did not notice the barrel touching as we shot. Sling swivel studs, standard, front and rear. And then we have the excellent Tika T3 enclosed action, which is brooch cut, I believe. That's what they brag about. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, Tika will tell you that that results in a very smooth action, right? That it's smooth and a lot. And it is. On the table, while shooting it, I noticed that the smoothness was good. I wouldn't call it amazing, though. It wasn't. It was, it was okay. Now, the nailer, when we put it together, same, same action. But we did do a little bit of work on it to smooth it out. So it was a little bit better than this. So I would say the action is uh, good to excellent. Good to excellent. And then it's enclosed for more rigidity. Some guys will swear by that. Um, 
I'm kind of ambivalent. I mean, I like the enclosed action. I think it is excellent and stiff. However, I've seen some open action guns just like this one achieve amazing accuracy. So I don't know if it necessarily holds a, a distinct accuracy advantage. Here's a look at the bolt. And that's your field strip. This is a good time to talk about the issue I noted. So we talked about the smoothness, and you will see this in inset footage. Uh, you can see the spring-loaded uh, ejector right there. The extractor there, which is, well, Seiko style, of course. The problem I found, and this was super surprising to me, I couldn't believe it was happening, is that the thing just wouldn't eject. Not really. What? I know, I was not when I ran the bolt fast, which I have a habit of doing. And so the problem I saw with the Tika T3CTR is that it wouldn't, you know, the round wouldn't come out. It would just kind of plop right there in action, and sometimes I had to pluck it out. So in a different outing, Tactical Doodle and myself were still running it, and I noticed he runs the bolt very slowly. And while you run it slow, it comes out just fine. The extraction, the ejection is clean, and it throws the cartridges exactly how you want them. Not controlled round feeding, it's not a Mauser action, but it was good. And then I'd run it fast, and so we, we fit, put our hand on the problem. It's like, that's it. It just You cannot pick up the rim quickly and toss it. Is it just this gun? I don't know. I would be tempted maybe to send it back to Tika and say, hey man, it's not injecting. I, you might even just send them the bolt and have them look at it. I bet you they say everything looks fine. The, here's the interesting part, getting back to the nailer, is I never saw that with a nailer. It just, the ejection on it was fabulous. Still a Tika T3 action. Go figure. I don't know. Don't know what to tell you, bro. Picatinny M1913 rail on top. Hallelujah. We don't need proprietary rings for this finish produced Tika. Awesome. Love the bolt on it. The bolt is perfection. 70 degree throw on it. Big polymer bolt extension like we've seen some act, uh, aftermarket ones do. Oh my gosh, that's a great bolt. bolt. Totally clears the scope. Again, this is a smaller scope, one inch tube, but it'd clear that one all day long. Here's your safety. Simple. I much prefer the safety over a Mauser safety. Kind of like, again, the Thompson Contender Compass has. Just because it's a bracketed review, that's the only reason I'm talking about it. It's on my mind. Loaded chamber indicator right there. We are empty. I like that feature as well. And then we get to the trigger guard. That is 6000 series aluminum, I believe. Super high quality. If you hate a polymer trigger guard, then you'll like the Tika T3 CTR. There's your magazine release right there. It's fully ambidextrous. I love it. It was it worked just perfect. Here's another problem. Another problem we saw is the magazine would drop on its own. And I don't think we bumped it at all. It just would. So you'll see as we're shooting it, click, nothing happens. And why did that happen? Well, the magazine just dropped a little tiny bit like that, and it's imperceptible to the shooter, definitely, because you're concentrating on the target. So push it back in, no big deal. How is that fixed? Perhaps a stronger spring in here. And by the way, we had to do that in the x-ray chassis for the nailer, and once we did it, then the spring uh, the mag retention was perfect. There's the lockup on the stock to the action you see the torque screws there single steel lug recoil lug there awesome finish is excellent too fit and finish throughout is perfect there's your takedown portion right here and that's about it man i think it's length length of pull adjustable too on this t3 ctr if you care i thought the length of pull was just just right the way it came now we did run the can on it entirely during the testing which I prefer. It makes a more enjoyable testing process for one. Settles the gun down and it's super quiet. Uh, that we, that'll take us to firepower. Uh, it's right there. I talked about it. And by the way, the magazine, in case you're wondering, is 6 ounces, which is pretty lightweight for a 10 round 308 or comparable cartridge. The well magazine well, which is part of the trigger guard, aluminum, bottom metal, is beveled as you can see. You can single feed rounds through the opening here. I didn't notice that this this action opening here was lacking. Like the T3X is supposedly larger. FYI. How about accuracy? Um, I shot it a lot. I had more paper. If I have it, I'll, if I have the photos, I'll roll it in. But I'm just gonna show you this one and it's pretty representative. 
it is outstandingly accurate. Keep in mind, this is off a polymer table, which can be quite wiggly, but when I do my part, I can shoot any gun that's MOA, I'll get MOA out of it, even in the desert with the wind kicking up. Now I have the two things here to remind myself. We have bag, bad ejection, the mag drops, Gymtech HVT, cool, whatever. Uh, Hornady 168 grain Amax. Not MOA, but dang close, man. In the desert, in real world conditions, Federal Premium 150 grain SP. Look at those groups, man. That's four shots. Seller and Bellet, this one right here, that's ball ammunition and it's extremely consistent. Highly recommended. I love SMB stuff. It is so excellent. It's just this load right here. Look at that. SMB shooting like premium ammunition on that. American Eagle, that's this one right here. Not doing too bad. This, by the way, is an average group from a really good bolt action rifle with FMJs. It's a good and same, same. But look at that group of American Eagle. Even better. So I think with this particular ammunition, with this particular gun, one and a half MOA all day long. With premium ammunition, I'll call it outstanding. You'll be easily, I wouldn't say easily, it's never easy to shoot that accurately, but you'll be MOA. So what they say about the gun, MOA capable, concur, bro, concur. Let's get back to that scenario. You thought I forgot, didn't you? So for that shot, it has to be accurate for sure. It also has to be super reliable. Bouncing back to my Weatherby Vanguard build, Bartline, Legacy Sports. How does that compare actually wise? That shoots the same, honestly. It, I wouldn't say that this gun here is like half MOA. It's not. I've been working on it, trying to get it consistently sub MOA. I haven't gotten it there yet. But I have shot a couple MOA groups with it, and it's tight. Maybe as the Bartline barrel breaks in, it'll shoot better. But I think overall, this gun is shooting just slightly better than that one. The magazine system on this has been very reliable. Is it like military dur durable? I mean, we do have a polymer bottom, bottom metal here. This is a polymer magazine button, not metal versus this one. So this is more rugged than that. The bolt knob I prefer here, but this one's pretty good too. Notice I didn't do any mods to it. I love the stock. The thing I love about the Vanguard though, and we're talking track record here, is that I don't have any ejection problems. It just works. It just throws consistently. There was something I talked about in the review. Look it up if you want to talk about it. It's been fixed, but it's just a super smooth action. The trigger is excellent on it. We'll talk about this one here in a second. I don't know, man. It This one's heavier configured with the glass we have here, which is a 30 millimeter glass and the red dot. It's nine pounds, one ounces, which is actually very light for, I think this is a 22 inch barrel on that. And the Hogue stock is comfortable. It is rubberized, grabby, but I like the coloration. Mm, I don't know. Which one do you think I'm gonna choose? Which one? So trigger on this one, by the way, Pulls excellent. And should we pull it on camera or should I just talk about it? Ah, let's pull it. Super quick. It is adjustable and I think out of box it was running just under four pounds, which is kind of at the top limit of its adjustability. Dang it. Cock on opening. Just like I said, three pounds, 11 ounces is what it is. I think you can adjust it, I had it written down, all the way to like two pounds. Yeah, two to four pounds, single stage, really crisp. I wouldn't change anything about the trigger. Uh, field strip, we talked about accessories. Uh, magazines, dudes, on the Tika, T3 CTR, 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 super hard to find. I clicked around, didn't even see them. Good luck, and when you do find them, they're gonna be bucks. I would probably get at least one more magazine so you could quick load if you're ex expecting, I don't know, serious use with a gun. You'll need scope and rings. That will cost more than a rifle if you spend a lot of money. This one's a value scope. Would I leave it on a gun like this? Mm, the Buckmasters is good, but no, I'd get something like a Nikon Pro Staff 7. That's kind of what I'm running nowadays. It's a high value, superb scope, zero stop. Nice dial, super clear BDC reticle. 
Uh, maybe I'll put a link in the bottom. And we need, by the way, industry, more 30 millimeter low rings. This is a night force mount, costing us about 275 if I remember right. It's got polymer one inch ring adapters in it. But I don't know what's going on with the industry where they can't seem to make 30 millimeter ultra low rings. I did find some on Amazon. These are the Vortex Tactical 30 millimeter low rings. But a set of these is going to be over five ounces. And they have three screws. I don't need I don't need three screws on my freaking caps. I'm not shooting 50 BMG. Two's fine. Two's fine. It's just more work, more hassle. But these seem pretty good. And the reason I bring it up is because it, it kind of drives to why I ran the scope. I wanted to put a 30 mil Pro Staff uh, 7 on it, and I didn't have rings. These finally came day before yesterday. Should have ran those. Scope's fine, though. If you put heavier glass on it, though, these two guns will weigh very similar. Very similar. So this is almost 8 pounds as is. You put more glass on it. It may be close to that weight. Maybe not quite. Uh, accessories. Uh, bipod. That's about it. Would I coat it? Just depends on your philosophy of use. What are you going to use it for? And is there a second cool thing involved? So like if you want it to look tactical, you want it to look cool, like this one does. But I, I coated the metal but not the stock. And yeah, coat it. It's a hard project. Coating a gun correctly is not easy. It takes a lot of work. Uh, accessories, I'll leave it at that. Value and options. Uh, I'm going to make the video shorter rather than longer. Because if I talk about competitive options, we're going to add 10 minutes. The Remington 700s I've kind of cooled on because I just don't like the way they eject. Uh, but this one also had kind of ejection problems, this particular sample. Um, there's Ruger products. Uh, Savage products are awesome. I love those as well. Howas are excellent. Weatherbees are good. And the list goes on and on. I think for what you're paying, which is about 870 bucks, worth it worth it go to war ready mm, maybe not quite yet with the ejection problem uh, let me put an asterisk next to that i don't want to act like this has an ejection problem but like i said when i throw the the bolt quickly as you've seen it, it just did not clear and that's mm, that's a showstopper for me i can't lie so getting back to the scenario which one would i choose between these two guns we can't bring any more guns in the mix that one my Weatherby, modernized, customized, Bartline barreled, Legacy Sports, Timney Trigger, build. I would. Because if this one was thrown perfectly all day long and I had equal glass on it, this one. Only for the fact that it, it has metal here. This is all metal. This is harder use. This section right here. And it has an enclosed action. So rain, snow, mud, it protects it. Just like I said in the nail review. This is more open. Still good. But just a little bit different. I love the Legacy Sports Mag. But in a military situation where we're really banging. A lot of abuse. Maybe climbing over rocks. Uh, you know, kind of lone survivor stuff. Uh, this would probably be tougher. This is a tougher gun. And that completes my review. See ya.